Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you're watching the Jay Campbell Podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio by a person who really doesn't need any introduction, Amanda Vollmer, Dr. Amanda Vollmer. Uh, Amanda, thank you so much for coming here today. It is an honor to have you. How are you? I'm great, Jay. Thank you. And uh, it's great to be here on your podcast, and uh, I'm excited to have a chat. Today. Yes, we are going to have an amazing chat. Uh, I'll I will give your bio for the people on my channel that don't know you, but I think most people probably do. But uh, again, a professional holistic practitioner, degree from Doctor of Naturopathic Medicine in the Canadian College of Naturopathic Medicine in Toronto, uh, Bachelor of Science in Agricultural Biotechnology from the University of Lethbridge, also a professional. I love this eclectic holistic health practitioner helping people to prevent disease and heal naturally for over 15 years. She's also trained in multiple modalities, including applied to kinesiology, IV therapy, Reiki, and she focuses on wild crafting, blending and extracting botanical medicine from the fields of her own garden. And last but not least, she is the owner and operator of Yum Naturals Emporium in Ontario, Canada, where she designs and produces handcrafted all natural body care remedies since 2012. I told her, before we went live on the show today that uh, I did not know she was the owner of that. And I've been buying stuff from Yum Naturals forever. So is my wife. So again, totally amazing. You also are the published author of Healing with DMSO, which I have a extensive background with using DMSO. That's probably not for this uh, channel and this broadcast. You and I will kind of have another conversation with that at some time. But of course, we can talk about healing with DS DMSO. But Doc, as I've been doing a lot lately, uh, and again, for the purposes of this podcast, today is Friday, June 17th. She made a special time for me uh, late on the East Coast. So again, thank you for that. Um, we are in very strange and precarious times. However, you know, that is perceptionally based. You know, you could also come from the Neville Goddard School and say that, you know, I am creating my heaven on earth right now and I'm living as the wish fulfilled. So I think a lot of people perspectively right now can label things is either bad or good. And I think we always have that option perceptionally, but I'd like to, to kind of get your take on, you know, where we are right now as a species. And I know it's opinion based, but where do you think we're going over say the next three to five to 10 years? Well, you know, uh, so far I've been surprised in all kinds of directions and it, it doesn't seem to be predictable the way that we used to predict um, something has changed and it's not anything I've been able to deduce and concretize quite yet. And it's very day to day. Um, I have been looking into a few different phenomenon. Um, one of the Mandela effect. I don't know if you've gone down that rabbit hole at all, but what I have. <laughs> Well, well, for you know, for those of us who experience these things, because not everybody seems to, um, it it perhaps uh, one way of explaining it is that our own perceptions of reality are changing almost instantaneously, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. we're writing things into our story uh, because time is actually illusion. We're we're writing it back right. in the past, you know, for ourselves. And uh, it, it seems like time has a, a bit of a different cadence uh, right now, which is very palpable, at least to a lot of people I speak with, they, they feel that the sense of time has gone uh, into this quickening yes. this sort of sensation. And uh, the things they used to be able to get done in a day is no longer achievable and this sort of thing. So something's shifting and uh, it's uncertain. It's an uncertain time. And um, where I, I am putting my energy into where I'm trying to manifest timelines is, um, you know, building community, local communities, um, where we're all learning how to share, how to grow food, how to, um, how to have industry apart from the existing industries right. that are functional and realistic and, um, healthcare, obviously that's outside of any of the public systems. And really working from getting out of private contracts with all kinds of government agencies and into the private domain. And that I think if we continue to do that, we will be in a really good position because 
um, once we get our own security and independence, then um, you're not contracting, you're not agreeing, you're not giving your free will into dystopian ideologies. You're fulfilling your own um, lineage of, you know, f- uh, fulfillment of, you know, abundance, right. really. Right. right. So, right. so I think it's what everyone chooses. Yeah. Ultimately. That's a great answer. A uh, couple of things you said a lot uh, to, to, to unpack. Um, we have to build, we have to come from a mind, as you said, we have to come from a mindset that we are going to have to create a separate reality, you know, a parallel construct of existence, which is like, you know, based on Ubuntu. That's the only word I could come up with when, you know, you start talking about living in like a, you know, a commune with like-minded people and we're growing our own food and we're not attached to the matrix uh, financial systems, payment systems, you know, you know, all of it. I mean, it's all contaminated. Uh, it's very interesting though, where it will go, you know, cause I, you know, obviously I can, I can, I can future prophesize gloom and doom, uh, or I can future prophesize separate realities. Like you said, separate parallel timelines where people like us are, so, you know, are, so let's classify us as sovereign, empowered, and free right? We're not attached to the matrix. We're not attached to the Mandela aspect of like, you know, uh, the AI programming our realities or programming like, you know, what we're supposed to think and see. And obviously you already know those type of people, you know, people call them NPCs, Dolores Cannon called them backfill people. It's like they're, yeah. they're, they're part of the construct of doing what the mainstream, you know, narrative, which constantly shifts and changes based on fear you know, has them doing. And, you know, once you become fully sentient, you know, consciously aware that you are not your body, that you are an infinite, you know, immortal spiritual being, you can stop that. I mean, you, mm-hmm. you, you don't have any buy into that. And I know you're there. I'm there. A lot of people watching this podcast are there. People that follow you are there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's going to be interesting. I really like to say, you know, my wife and I were talking, my wife, is just like us. My, you know, I was talking to her this morning um, and it's, Oh, it's, there's never been a better time, Amanda, than right now of living in the moment. Like we must force ourselves to not give a fly and you know what about the past and to not future prophesize about what might happen. It's literally about now, you know, who are your loved ones? You know, who are the people that you are truly, you know, energetically involved with, uh, and focusing your time and your efforts and, and placing your consciousness with them. You know, it's because we can all fall into it. You know, we're doers, we're creators. And so, you know, you can really get caught up into like what's coming and what's on your schedule and what you have to do. But it's like, to me now, it's never been a better time to just focus on the moment, the zero point, whatever you want to call it, the now space. And I think a lot of us, we we lose sight of that. And that's what my wife and I were saying this morning. That's like, you know what, who gives a shit? The economy is unraveling. You know, there's so, so much gloom, doom, porn everywhere regardless of what business space you're in, let's just live in the moment and just enjoy it. And that's really why we're here. You know? Yeah, I I agree. And, and that's why, um, I mean, we can predict basic things. Uh, We know what the, they want, right. Right. (laughs) And we've been beaten over the head with it so much. I mean, we know what they did to us and are, are trying to continue to do to us. We know they have, an agenda called agenda 21 and right. they, they have a social credit system, which they've already yep. employed in China and they're trying yep. to see which suckers are going to uh, accept it and how much resistance they are going to get. And they're trying to manipulate people's minds to be in fear and be programmable and become more AI based and right. all of that. We, we know this, but that's the, um, the psychopathic path. That's the right. path to, um, illness and degradation. That's not a living path. Right. And that's the choice. I, I, everyone has it. Now, one could argue that, do you have a true choice when you're, you know, born into a cult and been manipulated for centuries and so forth, but maybe, maybe we're that in tune deep inside and, and it, the game has to be that tricky right. uh, for us to uh, believe it and play and and go through what we need to in our forgetfulness to achieve something because i really do feel like there must be some meaning to why we would choose to forget who we were uh, and go through all of this suffering uh, and separation 
And it, it, my understanding of mastery is that you, you do have to dance the polarities of an, a topic before you, you embody it and, and integrate it. And perhaps that's, that's just what this place is about. And, uh, and then we get narrower and narrow as the path becomes the, the, the furthest path. And, and only a percentage of us will see things like this. And that's why par part of me doesn't feel as the same as I used to about um, trying to change people's minds and educate them about things. And I was really more pushy about that and, and demanding that people be more moral and be more ethical and sure. want to learn and want to read and do those things. Why don't you want to be like that? I, you know, don't right. you want to achieve all you can in this life? And I've, I've, in my maturity, I've let a lot of that go now. And um, it's interesting because it's, it is a very moment to moment putting you in the present and what's, what are you being called to do now? And it, the ego, oh, as soon as the ego will get in there, I'm like, oh, well, I have to stop that right now. So I'm not going to speak at this gathering today, or I'm not going to, I'm not going to correct that person today because what's the point? There's not really a, a, a point other than what, to satisfy a small little shadow piece or something. So I'm very, very I'm, I'm really super aware or hyper vigilant about my shadow pieces right now and how they pertain to the hero savior complexes and all of these other ar archetypes that we bring that we're playing with because I'm done with that part of the game. So I'm kind of waiting for what's next. Like, Oh, well, what's it going to be? It's not anything to do with that now. So is it just going to be work? Cause right now a lot of it does feel, um, work-based okay preparing classes and courses to teach the teachers that are coming out of the medical cartel and they need another way they need to understand another way to the Rockefeller cartel yeah yeah i mean yeah. You're, that's why i have you on the podcast you're dropping brilliant <laughs> bomb after brilliant bomb i'm with you 100 percent um you know, it's and, and, and let's face it. I mean, and we're, I bet you we're right around the same age. My guess is uh, you graduated high school in 1987. Yeah, uh, I was born in 74. So, oh, you're younger than me then. Okay, I thought you were you're a little wiser than me. So, I thought you were a little older than me. Okay, so I'm I was 71. So, um, oh yeah. So, so but, but we're from the same exact generation. You know, yeah. I actually look at our Gen X generation as like the last hope. <laughs> Right. I mean, you know, without going any rabbit hole deeper in labeling or, or uh, you know, demeaning, but um, the truth of what you just said is that uh, it's an act of spiritual violence to attempt to awaken others. But you don't know that until you get to that level of maturity, that level of, like you said, that hyper awareness. And I'm the same way. I mean, I tell people I was six. And I ran out of the back of Catholic church and my dad chased me. He's like, where are you going? I'm like, not in that cult I was six. <laughs> so it's like, you know, some of us are really truly walking this, you know, quote unquote, seeker, spiritual path, whatever for a long time, but it's an evolution. And, you know, I've gone through so many phases too of like, you know, so I'm with you hundred percent. Like I don't label or judge or condone, you know, if you got the V, you didn't get the B, you got the B, you didn't get the B, you know, you're a supporter of that, you know, the C is a legitimate thing and blah, blah, blah. I don't, it's not, it's a waste. Like you said, you're, you're wasting precious energy to mix your vibrational field with someone who's not deserving of your vibrational field. And again, I, that's not a judgmental thing. That's just like an energy awareness, right? Like why you want to be hanging out and communicating and conversing with people who are, who are vibrating down here when your consciousness is up here. So it's like, you know, you start getting into that level of awareness of like, okay, resonance is not going to be get dissonance. I'm not going to attempt, let that person vibrate where they vibrate. And maybe at some point in time, they will come to me ready and they will ask me to offer my opinion. And then cool, you know, they're open to receiving it. But you're right. I think most people in our community proselytize and, 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 you know, how many times in the last two and a half years, Amanda, have you heard someone in your family say, but can you believe that so-and-so got the, you know, or why would they do that? You know, and it's like, you're who you are. Talk to them. And it's like, no, it's not my place. It's not where I'm at. Like, 
they got to make choices for themselves. So I, I think that, you know, there's a big picture of like what you, what you just covered is that in the last two and a half years, the whole planet has gone through its dark night of the soul. And some people have evolved through it. And some people are gone, right? You know, the people that wear three masks and a face shield in the bright sunlight, you know, that's them. That's, that's the choices they've made, you know, whatever it's okay. It's still for evolution and growth of the soul. That's where they felt they had to go and cool. You know, I got no shame. I got no judgment. I, you, you're, you're where you're at, you know, just don't get in my energy field. Right. Like you're walking through an airport, right. And you, you see them and they look at you like, I just send them love back and like, Hey man, it's cool. You, you be you, I'll be me. Um, but yeah, so I mean, like it, it's 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 interesting, but you know, to your points, like we have to get to a place where we're okay with what's happening, right? Like with what Hawkins said, you know, he's like everything is happening exactly as it's supposed to. It's 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 getting to that level of like acceptance and not having the resistance that that's not the case. And granted, we all go through you know issues in our life every day where it's simple to have resistance to it. But you, you really do have to get to a place of just like acceptance and being like, it's cool. I'm going to stay in my space and I'm not going to react, you know, instinctively or vibrationally from a place of survival. And I'm going to just, you know, be in a place of you know, hopefully resonance and just exist in that moment and be okay with it. You know, and again, come from kind of the, maybe the place of neutral observation and not react. And, and that's not easy to do, especially after the last two and a half years. Yeah, there's, um, you know, the way that I've come to it now is that um, I've accepted the fact that we we judge everybody all the time and are, and we, we're just constantly judge. We constantly have the inner judge. Um, and we're judging, though, because we're trying to uh, ascertain where that person is and we're trying to understand uh, the level that we can communicate, you know, to them with or at and we're always assessing other people and uh, noticing things about them and then making deductions based on what we notice and and that's really like a textbook definition of judgment so so it's okay I find it I used to condemn that in myself but now I realize that it's just it's just our nature to right to do that because we're just tr we're just scientists by nature we're just trying to gather data and mm -hmm. who are our allies and who are the ones we can't can and can't trust and who are the ones that are going to be safe with our children and right. we're always looking like that and um i still uh will go with what i feel uh, mm -hmm. as long as i put it through my filters to make sure that it's not purely ego or um it's just reactionary because mm -hmm. sometimes it might be that you do have to engage with that energy and you do have to, depending on your path and your right. Uh, purpose. Right. Um, and then you're in it, there you are. So now um, how, where do you have boundaries and where are you teaching? Uh, where is it appropriate to say, no, I'm done or no more. Um, I've had to put up a lot of boundaries because what happens is when people know you have something that they may want from you, um, like health knowledge, uh, that might be more rare because of all the suppression, they uh, come to you all the time. So I yeah. get the help me, help yeah. me thing. And, and, and it's, it's, I don't, I don't think people understand from this perspective, how overwhelming that can be. Because, oh, it's horrible. Um, it's, horrible. it's like, it's horrible. here, I'm dying, help me. And you, you have like 12 of those in right. one, one day. And I mean, what, well, so I would have been dead long ago. had <laughs> I, been, I really would have, because I, um, and I knew it. I, I actually dissociated from my body this, um, my last, the day I knew I had to stop taking consultations for a while and just take right. a step back and go, what am I doing? Um, I had 19 clients that day and I, I floated out of my body. I completely wow. dissociated at the end of that day. And, and I realized what I was, I was hurting myself and that's not right. Something's not right about how I'm doing this. And so we're just, we're endlessly seeking and growing and in, in, in uh, interacting with our world. And mm -hmm. we're 
I feel my layers are at now is just uh, everything about frequency and mm. voltage um, and how how do I get better at that that particular understanding about where I live and how um, my space, my environment that I'm in is lifted and continually lifted so that when others come, if they are, if they can't be in that energy, they go and, mm, or they, right. or they're spacey. I notice they kind of are like confused and like they can't, don't know which direction to look in. Um, yeah. or they yeah. feel really comfortable and welcomed and that sort of thing. So I think that's our greatest protection, if you will, is understanding how to really make energy clean, um, flowing and, um, and be able to repair it on, in the moment, um, which can be very abstract to even when I say it, the way I think it and feel it in my body is very difficult to sure. put into the wording that we have because it's so limited. I mean, I've, mm -hmm. I've, I have frequency and I have voltage. I, I don't have too many words to try to explain what I'm saying, you know, and, uh, but I know you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. A, a lot of people who, understand those nuances would right. as well but you start talking like that to you know a grandparent who's had four vaccines uh recently the, like oh okay you know they're not gonna, they're gonna think you're whatever they're gonna go into negative judgments so no no I, I love what you just said though about how we are you know if you think about like with carlos castaneda you know with the flyers and the predators, you know, of the ego mind and stuff. It's like, you're right. I mean, like, it's part of like living in the physical dimension or experiencing, you know, life in an avatar body. It's, it is, you know, and that's like the one thing, you know, that my wife will say to me all the time. She's like, you're just a constant judger, you know, um, when I make those comments and, you know, sometimes, you know, it's not like I'm doing it in front of them or something. And it's like in passing with to her, but you know, you really do have to get to a place where you're not making the comments, right? Like you're, like you said, you're internally judging everything, but are you making that comment to whoever it is, a loved one or someone in your inner circle, or are you just like letting it go and just, or you go, or you'll say something like, um, Oh, that person is a jerk. Let's just say, Oh, that, that guy's a jerk. What a jerk. That's a judgment, right? But if exactly. you're, what I mean by the judgment process is like, I wonder why they're a jerk. So, mm -hmm. okay, that person's being a jerk, and that's okay because that's my definition of a jerk. What that person just did, and well, wonder why he's being a jerk. You know, maybe there's that means there's some trouble in his life. He has trouble in his life. He has stress or discordance or some sort of disharmony in his life to behave like that. So it's a softened version of it. It's not accusatory. It just is. It's like you're noticing a behavior. And you know, there's got to be a backstory to that. So it actually can bring you into a more uh, understanding and accepting space when you know that that person is just being a jerk because he's having maybe a domestic problem and he, or he's right. sleeping on the couch because of it. And he's, you know what I mean? And, and then you let the benefit of the doubt be. And if you need to engage with that individual and you feel that that's the right uh, thing for you, then you may want to ask, you know, are you okay? And uh, do you need any assistance or what's going on? Or do you need to talk? And I find that a lot with males still to this day, they don't talk about how they're feeling very much. It's a, it's a very fe feminine aspect that, you know, women will get together and chitty chat about how they're feeling. And it seems to be still quite taboo among males to express themselves properly so you know i often will just say just whatever you need to talk about you know i'll i'll be an ear and just listen and never offer any advice because we're not fixing anybody's stuff you're just helping no. them you know release it and i will actually call in um i'll call in like the violet fire the violet, sure, flame. violet flame yeah yeah. And I will do work with them that way. And you don't have to even, you can just ask their soul force for permission to do any of that. You don't have to um, verbally do so. 
you can really help a lot of people just that way, you know? Well, look, I do that, Amanda, with everyone. This morning when my wife and I got into a little spat, I literally communicated with her soul. I mean, I do this all the time. We're very similar people. Um, this conversation is amazing and it has nothing to do with what I wanted to talk to you about. And I want to, you know, let people know and, you know, go a little bit down the path. I don't want to abandon that conversation. So I will weave it back in, but I do want to just tell you that like, you know, one of the main reasons I brought you on here today was because obviously I'm 100% in support of what you think. Uh, you know, I've, I, 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 it's, it's, you know, once you become an energy healer, you know, intuitive person, you're in touch with your empathic side, you, you start realizing that there's just, universal truths and you know everything from like you said earlier in the show you know from the mainstream from the rockefellers from you know allopathic you know what we want to call them reptilian demonic you know whatever they are it, it, it's it's an inversion and you know everything they've taught most people you know in schools and for from formal educations is disinformation or it's an inversion you know uh, as i like to say 70% truth, 30% strategic error, right? <laughs> so you, you, you send people off the path and, and, and they don't truly learn, you know, what is real and what isn't. And, you know, I have a saying that, you know, I coined like three or four years ago, I don't remember in a podcast, but like only a pure heart can discern. And the matrix blocks chakras, it blocks heart centered awareness because again, it keeps people, you know, in this autonomic, you know, central nervous system loop of survival, anger, fear, victimhood. And so they never really open this up. I mean, I, you know, I could speak about my family, my mom and dad. I mean, they raised not, and not my mom gave birth to 10 kids, nine kids, but you know, there one died. I was the next one, but he was Christopher J. They named me J Christopher, but like the, oh, by the way, he died of SIDS. Let's not go down that path, right? Because now we have sads. I know, <laughs> I, I know, I know the, uh, the 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 algo will hear that, so I'll stop. Um, mm. But but the truth is is um, they have been in the Catholic religion their entire life, and as you know, that's again almost all the Abrahamic teachings are very fear based you know, redeemer complex, like you said, savior, external, everything, you know, never go within, which is again, what all the quote unquote, pretty much earth-based religions have done to hijack the real original spiritual precepts that are and found in every one. Again, if you understand how to find them, everything's allegorical, but the, the, the real truth is until a person is able to go within, However, that might be in meditation, introspection, contemplation, sitting in nature, you know, to find that still space, that still moment, that still time, stop, whatever, however you phrase it, there's a million different names for it. You're not capable of receiving heart based knowing, consciousness, awareness, whatever. And so most people are blocked. And that's why they tap into what I call the human central computer which is the collective consciousness, which is again, low vibration, drone, hive mind, program you, you're, you're nothing more than your body. You know, you don't understand any things that you and I, you know, you know, intuitively are aware of. And so for where we, where we're going for me, you know, and I want your feedback is we have to get, you know, I know again, Hawkins would always say, we got to get the collective to 20% vibrating at like 450 and like that raises all the boats in the harbor, but it's more than that. It's, 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 it, we have to get people to an understanding that they are their own savior. And I still see so many people quote unquote in our community who are looking to the, you know, to this guru. And then it's like two months later to the next guru. And, it, and it's like, they're still not willing to do the great work, right? Which is like, go within, you know, you know, sit there and start contemplating and reflecting on like you. And, you know, like you said, step into, you know, deal with your shadow and, you know, be willing to integrate the issues that you have. It, 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 I, I feel like the spiritual community, whatever we are nowadays, has created more guru, external gurus, you know, maybe it's through the internet, you know, Maybe these podcasts don't really help because then people listen to you and I and they're like, wow, 
You know, I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just feel like sometimes like all the, it's so simple if you were willing to work on yourself, but so few people are. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Well, a couple of things. I've asked that question a, a lot. It, it, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly turning over, you know, am I doing what is valuable for others and myself right. and my family? And if I'm not, I will not do it. I, I don't care what it might appear like, you know, right. I will rip it apart if it's not serving, if it's the, if it's the wrong way. I don't, it could be beautiful and uh, balmy, but if it's not serving, it's useless. So it goes. But one thing I've learned is when we do speak together and we do the podcast, um, when I ask that question, as I have many times, invariably by the next day, there is a message in my inbox thanking me for speaking and saying something because they needed to hear that particular piece in that particular way, that particular time. Right. I think we, as long as we feel and we question and we're always making sure we're on top of our integrity game, um, I think it serves. Um, I, I do feel, um, you know, that we have um, a lot to help people retrain into to get to that place of contemplation for themselves. Sure. I, I because what you said with, you know, the religions and all the externalization and all the stimulation, um, people don't even know how to have a, where to start, you know, have you have like an X start here. <laughs> and a right. Map or something. right. They don't have that. So um, I think one of the courses, I mean, I've been designing different courses for people for health and, you know, I'll do a shadow work course and, inner child healing course and these sorts of things to because that's really where it's all being derived from how we feel uh and the subconscious parts of us that need to be brought into the conscious mind so that we aren't just automatons being um triggered uh being predicted because you can predict a, a programmed subconscious but you can't predict the aware, awake, conscious mind that could change in a parsec, right? Could make a new decision before you even <laughs> right. had an algorithm <laughs> thought up of, you know? So that our power is really um, where it comes down to for what is healing us, what is going to help us with our uh, future and I feel like, as I always have through through this whole thing, um, there's a line. <laughs> That's where you're at now. This thing. The you don't thing. even know how to call it. The 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 falling apartness. Um, the <laughs> is that there's a line in the sand, and 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 everyone is being given the offer. You know, will you cross yes. the line, and will you risk it? So what I said earlier, how I will tear it down if it doesn't serve. So will you? be able to tear it down, to walk away and, and let leave the rubble behind and start fresh in, in this way. Uh, because people are very addicted to continuing to make the same mistakes. Yes. And, yeah. um, and especially if they've invested in it <laughs> more, the longer, you know, yeah. Uh, well, the worse. Well, you, to everything you just said, it's great stuff. I mean, you could make an argument to go really, really deep and metaphysical and where we're at right now. And again, this is so great that we have a conversation totally opposite of what you and I thought we were going to talk about today. And that's the beauty of podcasting now when you allow it and you're not formulaic. But you could actually, Amanda, you could make a really great argument that the role of the quote unquote, you know, however you want to phrase them, them, the dark side, the parasitic energies is to, in their final push, awaken as many souls from their somnambulism as possible. And so that's the real role they're playing is like, you just said it. And I've said this a thousand times and we are on such a crazy similar wavelength. That's what the line in the sand is. The line in the sand is, are you willing to die for resonance? And the other side is, are you just going to stay asleep because ignorance is bliss? Right. And so both sides will have a place to go, you know, whether you want to, you know, go into the new age and say there's going to be a, a, an ascension or a, a spiritual vibrational shift or change or, you know, 
whatever you want to call it, the rapture from Christian scripture. I mean, it doesn't matter, but like, if that is what's coming and I could make a very good argument, so could you, that something like that may be coming. I mean, again, all the ancient spiritual texts talk about it. Uh, then you are now being given the last, this is your last chance. You know, what side are you on? And again, I don't have judgment of what side people pick. Like you said, you know, like the older person who's been veed three times with two boosters, you know, in fear because they're at the end of their quote unquote avatar body existence. I mean, I get it, you know, and I have no, no judgment or condemnation from them. And, and, and just as I, you know, a young 22 year old, you know, millennial or whatever they're called a Gen Z, you know, who's chosen to be, you know, fully veed and is all sucked into the progressive virus, you know, uh, university complex, whatever you want to call that. Like, that's cool too. Like we're all on the same path. We're all walking back or getting on the path back to perfection, which is where, you know, my beliefs and awareness, we all stem from, you know, we volunteered, we incarnated, we came into this experience, you know, to evolve and grow our souls. And we're all growing and evolving at different rates and speeds and no rate or speed is better than another. I mean, you really got to get to that level, you know, I mean, it's not easy, right? Because we see our loved ones and we see what's happening to them and you know, I'm sure you know people that have died and had horrible things that have happened in the last two and a half years, and they don't even know, right? And it's like, you're like, dude, like, but you don't say that because you know, you, you know that it, it, you, there's, there's no path, there's no path of righteousness. And so um, it's just, it, it's a very interesting time. And, you know, and to go back to like what we were talking about at the very beginning, it's like, that's why living in the moment is so important now. Because when you're living in the moment, none of that shit even matters. Yeah, and I think I don't think people understand what living in the moment actually means. Because um, if you if you just say that and you haven't uh, experienced um, your life in that way, then it just sounds weird. Be meaning, sure, sure. You're like what? How how can I live in the moment? when I know I have bills that I have to right, prepare. Right. To pay My stock I'll... portfolio is down 80%, Amanda. How can I live in the moment? Yes, exactly. And there's always <laughs> future past that's, that's with you. I mean, if you're only living in the moment, then I guess your trauma is resolved from your past, right? You know, you know I have to say this because you triggered me. It's hilarious. But my father is so survival, 76, still doing it, still doing it. He literally would say to you, if you said something like that, he would be like, do you understand? I got a $36,000 a month operation to run, Jay. <laughs> He's 76 and he won't move. He's a multi-millionaire. <laughs> he won't like downsize and, you know, go to, to a place because he's got to run his operation. And he's got his stuff in the basement. Mm -hmm. And it's like, dude, you got nine kids. You know, now you've got all these grandkids. And yet you're still caught up in your materialism aspect of your existence because that's all you know. You're, 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 you're bankrupt spiritually. Like what would take, what would allow you to like understand that none of that shit matters? And, it, and it's like, you know, I'm, I have this conversation with you before I'd have it with him because you can't have the conversation. I mean, I, I speak to my brothers and sisters about this all the time. We're like, yeah, that's just dad. That, you know, that's just who he is and where he's at. And like, you know what? It's cool, but it's mind blowing to see it. And, 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 and again, to, you know, you, again, you have to be compassionate and, and that's where I am now, you know, for him, but I can have these conversations with you. Cause like what you said, you know, just, it made me think about it. It's like, fuck. Well, you're sometimes right. you have to make a decision whether you're going to be compassionate with yeah. yourself or with another. If you can do both, you're in a good place. However, if your compassion to somebody who is uh, in a, um, you know, an echo chamber uh, right. of their own illusions and you're not really, uh, you know, <laughs> contributing much or it's hurting you, then that's when you have to make a decision to have put up a boundary. Right. And that could be more, that could be the compassionate um, way to yourself where you're being compassionate. Oh, well, that's yourself. what I've done. That, that, see, that's yeah. what I've done. But I, you know, I think it's funny again, conversations with my wife, my wife is not that way. You know, her family is just as, you know, not conscious if I can say, but like she still chooses to engage and, you know, 
is there for them and shows up at everything. And it's like, for me, it's like, and it's easier for her. Cause like, you know, we live in Southern California and her family's here. My family's on the East coast. So I don't have to, you know, I'm not pressured or trapped or, you know, ask to, to go anywhere and to be there. And so, so I don't have to deal with that stuff, but it's like, I still deal with it through, you know, inevitably through her. Um, but it's just, it's interesting because you're right. Boundaries are the key, but as you know, that's hard, especially depending on the religious context or construct that you come out of. Cause you know, they have that statement, blood is thicker than water, you know, dude. Mm -hmm. Well, you do feel, um, because you vibrate at least somewhat similarly to your lineage, you, you can't escape that. Um, right. it's, right it's of you or it's part of you and, and you can honor that. But I guess my, my point is you, if it's hurting you, the, the question is, is it the sacrifice? Is that what you're meant to do? Are you meant mm -hmm. to, to bleed a little for that situation? And it might be, yes. I mean, we have all suffered to help someone before sure. and, 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 or, or even our children, especially our children. Right. So that's understandable to a point. And like everything in this realm, it's a balance point, right? It's a homeostasis that you're going for. Um, and it's, it's, it's conscious uh, conceptions of your own, um, you know, your own mind, your own illusions, and you're trying to understand them as you go. And the more you expand your awareness, your conscious awareness, then the more responsibility you get, the mm -hmm. um, usually the more abundance and manifestation power you get, Definitely. and you get more keys to the castle when you do it. These the, the the ones that are young that are being silly and running around with their egos and thinking they're achieving something, they are protected from their own selves to some degree. And it's you have to if you want to drive the car <laughs> yourself as an adult then you have to know, you have to have some skills. You can't just be thrown behind the wheel um, without being trained how to do it. And it's yeah. no different for your spiritual prowess and, and all of that. So everyone is going to get there eventually. That's right. Um, you know, and we just have to, our purpose and our path is our purpose and our path is a path that is very, very, very um, sacred to your own existence and your own knowing. And it's very actually, um, lonely kind of because you, no one really knows you uh or can right. even really really you know what i mean because yeah. your experiences it, could never be uh fully explained to anyone it's just too large it's too all all encompassing and that's why having a connection to a creator force and knowing that you're not alone, you are supported, right. um, is, is, is very grounding and, and yeah. um, motivating rather than looking for validation by other people, right. which, I mean, I've pretty much thrown out the window many times. <laughs> well, I mean, look, to, to that point, and then I do want you to cover a couple of mm -hmm. topics before, if you got like another 10, 15 minutes, and I promise I'll let you go after that. But um, that's the key. What you just said is like, when you're when you're living from a place like I call it, uh, where you are fully cognizant, connected to your higher self, and you're capable of allowing your higher self to guide you, you know, through your life. Now, granted, you know you're you have an ego. We already talked about that, and your ego is instinctually programmed to keep you in survival, right? Because that's what it's here for. So when 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 you when you're coming from a place of allowing your higher self to lead or again being connected consciously through it i like to call it the light of being um you will check in you know you will be able to not react out of fear which is again is the default programming of every person on the planet who hasn't done any internal work it's just the way it is i mean we really do like you said you know we're judging we're reacting so it's like I now know, and it's taken me a long time. I mean, I'm 51, but I, I now know that I don't melt down anymore. Like a nuclear bomb right now, Amanda, could go off in our midst, and I wouldn't freak out. Now, 10 years ago, I would freak out. Amanda, I got to go. 
You, you know, you know what I mean? So it's like you, you, you do have to take yourself again through your practice, you know, through your hopefully ritual focus of getting to that still space um, regularly and consistently and, and with a focus so that, you know, you, you can prepare to be a person that doesn't, again, react out of fear instinctually and, and runs the survival programming and, and then be obviously again, you know, observationally compassionate for those that are. And again, I have so many people, you know, you were saying like your family, uh, your soul family, you know, the family, you know, you're at a similar, uh, you know, let's say vibrational frequency. And it's like, I think of like, you know, the people in my immediate family and like, there's only a couple of us, you know, that have truly worked on themselves. And so it's interesting to see how that's happened. And, you know, and, and there's like two people in my immediate family and we actually have a lot of conversations, which is cool. I was just with my sister two weeks ago and my, my youngest daughter, and we were talking about these things and it's just like mind blowing to think that like, I can have those type of conversations now. And I couldn't have those conversations 10 years ago. Not only that, I would be like, like you were saying early in the show, I would be looking at the person like, huh, what are you, what are you talking about? Mm-hmm. You know? So it, it is interesting how we do evolve uh, and again, as you said, some of us faster than others, and it's cool. You know, and everybody, it's funny everybody's too, where like, they're supposed to be. And also, after a period of time, like especially if you can get to a place where you recognize patterns, then you know when you react like that to something that someone's said, you catch yourself and you go, right. "Oh, exactly." Okay, that means I know that pattern, and I know when I've done that before. I was just ridiculing because it gave me a sense of cognitive dissonance because it went up against what I thought I knew. Right. That's a tell that I have to let go and either choose to study that topic so that I do know and understand it or choose to just say, Oh, you know, I'm ignorant on that. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, cause you can choose to not study it. It just at least accept that you don't know it, that you're ignorant to it. You know what I mean? And you can remain in ignorant all you want if you wish, but then y- your premise is to have no opinion on it, not to be opinionated and think, you know, that's, you can't, you're not, it's either, or <laughs> you either really know, and you, you know, when you're being challenged and you go do the work, like about the virus, you know, uh, in the germ theory understanding, uh, or you, you know, go, I actually am clueless on, on that topic. Uh, um, so I, I can't uh, offer, you know, anything or something like that. Then that's at least yeah. you being self-aware. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Okay. So let's, let's talk about that just in the last couple of minutes. Um, you know, so our, our talking points and there's three and you can just put them all together, but do viruses exist? No. What is germ theory and why is it false? And then what makes people sick? So just kind of big picture. Or go, you know, microscopic if you want on all three of those things. And 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 obviously, you know, make them relevant to the last two and a half years because I don't think they've ever been more relevant. Well, I mean, th- the issue with a lot of these dis- discussions is that we uh, it's a, it's a huge topic. It's yeah. not really it's not really something you can put together in ten minutes per se without you know if someone's new to it. Um, right. But ultimately if you have come this far, then you understand that we have liars here on this earth who have been lying to us about virtually everything from the get-go. Automatically, the trust is broken, right? So we don't trust these people and what they say. Um, I think one of the false premises that's really hard for people to understand until they do is that our science doesn't follow um, rigorous procedures and the scientific method any longer. Right. And I think people assume that science is got its, is P's and Q's together. It's, it's, it's not, you know, cross its T's and dots, it, it dot his eyes. And it's like, it, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. that it is air airtight, you know, it's perfect. And right. that's a, a huge, huge fallacy. Um, it's actually consensus science. It's become consensus science, which is basically whatever a bunch of people believe <laughs> is <Right>. the science, <laughs> right? Yeah. which is not science by definition. So that's one problem, huge problem. 
so the simple um, answer is no, uh, viruses do not exist. And no, uh, germs, whether they be viruses, bacteria, fungal forms, and even parasites, do not cause disease. And all kinds of stories, when I say that, I know the minds of the people are going to go, why, why have stories? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but polio and the, all the stories. And so that's the tapes that will start to run, the programming tapes. So I would say to someone that where that's beginning to happen is write them down. Like, what are your tapes? Oh, but uh, bacteria, what about, what about tetanus? And what about measles? And what about HIV? You're going to get Jingle. them out of you. Yeah. And <laughs> get them out of you. Those are just your trigger tapes. That's not your real mind. Now, once that's out of your mind, now revisit. What if you were lied to for a couple of hundred years? about the cause of disease and because there was superstition and belief because you believed it you made it so you filled in the blanks of the circumstances so that it made sense for you but that wasn't science that was uh you trying to formulate a hypothesis that sat enough with you so you could leave it so you could say right. oh that's what it is the end right right, right. and that Unfortunately, that's what most people have been doing with information and not actually doing the proper open-minded logical research to know that not one virus has ever been isolated. But it's, here's the main problem. There are so many contradictions in, in virology that um, people just don't even sit and contemplate anymore right. and actually think it through because it's not very difficult. When you do that, if you just yeah. read a couple of papers in their methodology sections, you realize that they can't go to or don't go to an individual who's supposedly sick and take secretions right. and then go, oh, my gosh, there must be so much viral matter in these secretions because, right, by their edicts that you produce it, right, you're sick and your cells are hijacked now, which is all war analogy and all this kind of nonsense, mm -hmm. taken over randomly, different random tissues, only one virus at a time, even though there's millions of them. And you are full. You're so, in fact, you're, you're so diseased, you have to shame yourself with a shaming ritual and a mask and things, right? You dirty, dirty, dirty person. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then, but then yet they can't take that phlegm or, they right. can't swab you right here. They have to go and whatever they're doing and put it in a Petri dish and grow. And there would be tons. You don't have to do anything. There's your tons and tons of viral particles where you'd be able to filter and isolate and do po conscious postulates and figure out that, yes, indeed, is the disease causing agent and so forth. But they don't do that because mm -hmm. they say that there's not enough viral matter in the secretions of the people who are so-called carrying these diseases. Uh, huh? Right. What? Okay. So what they have to do is grow it in a lab condition and use all sorts of various inputs of multiple forms of RNA and DNA from different types of cell lineages. And they create a cytopathic effect, which means the cell is slowly being killed right. or malnourished and they produce those particles. And really all virology has done over and over and over again is prove that when we're poisoned, we break down <laughs> right. into right. bits, fall apart to bits. And they have gone to great lengths at making up their tinker toys and playing with their tinker toys and making up different admixtures of tinker toys and pretty pictures of tinker toys that are, aren't really actually real most of them are cgi and right. making leaps of logic as to how a mechanism of this infectivity occurs and it's a story it's stories it's not fact it's not science and it's not truth um and because they have said well this is how disease works guys you sneeze on little uh, johnny johnny catches it and carries it and now you're super spreading and all this fancy <laughs> cult language, super right? Super spreading. Yeah. Yeah. And they, um, they, 
they don't sit and think this whole thing a little bit through and start to ask some questions. That's the only way you really get out of a cult is you start to question like, well, how do we know that when we remove the material from the living body, being that we know that germs or what we're calling germs are pleomorphic, meaning they change right. their shape yeah. depending on their terrain. You know, yeah. how do we know that we didn't just change whatever we so-called took out of the body and, and, and put into some sort of strange test that actually is hundred percent meaningless um, because the PCR process and lo looking for these types of um, receptors and nucleotides and so forth is irrelevant. It's uh, random and you can actually make up your, any test that you want for any disease and right. you will find it in the cytopathic effect as Dr. Stefan Lanka did in his uh, second control phase uh, experiments, right? Because yep. they don't do controls. Yep. They don't well, do controls. So all, all those movies and videos that have come out recently, which I know you were a part of, one of them, I can't remember, with Kaufman and all these guys. I mean, it's all amazing stuff. And again, you know, if you're in a place of total dissonance, you know, you're not going to receive it. You're not going to listen to it. I mean, again, I, I want to go somewhere with this, but like, you know, I'll give you another analogy is like, and I find this hilarious and I know you're a humorist, so you'll laugh at this, but like, the best part of all of this for me, again, because I'm living in the moment most of my time now, is to go on the social media feeds and to look at the, whatever you want to call them. I mean, I got, my name is NPCs. And look at their comments. And to realize, like, it would not matter what you gave them. From an evidentiary standpoint, it doesn't matter, Amanda. I am cognitively dissonant in my echo chamber and I'm going to my grave or to my, the end or whatever it is, no matter what, like you, you cannot change these people. And again, this is all vibrational, but I want to, I want to spin this, you know, cause everything you said is right. And you're speaking it, you know, from a physician's like, you know, holistic healer perspective, I'm going to like go full blown woo woo on you. And I'm going to say, and I, and I say this all the time, like how could an energy being of plasmatic fire and that's what we are we are literally photonic light beings get the c or get cancer or get any of these things without a conscious thought process behind it as you just said in a lot of the things you said that we have been conditioned to perceive right because our thoughts program our cells and our cells when they're coming from a negative quote-unquote diseased state i mean think about like how like mental health, they label people depressed or whatever. And then the diagnosis, you know, is their life. It, you know, they, they introduce you and say, oh, hi, you know, I'm an alcoholic. Think of alcoholics with AA, you know, hi, I'm an alcoholic, you know, 40 years. But so it's like we are programming ourselves. And the narrative, the collective consciousness, Madison, the Rockefellers, whoever you want to call it, you know, the interdimensional beings that, you know, Rudolf Steiner was talking about 120 years ago. I mean, whoever it is, is programming you and you have a choice to either accept, like you said earlier, the inputs or not. And so when you're not accepting the, their bullshit and you're at a place of awareness that it is bullshit and that they want you to program or, 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 you know, tap in, you know, to their frequency, you can't even get it. You know, I would even make an argument to, to go deeper with you is like, think about how allopathic brainwashes people to take procedures at certain years and intervals in their life. You know, and my, my, my wife, Monica's mom, you know, she went and got her colonoscopy at 65 and they found a polyp and well, it's not cancerous, but it could become precancerous. And, you know, we recommend you cut it out because we're surgeons and that's what we do. And, it's insane how people buy into this, this cult of objectivity or science or whatever you want to call it, that like, this is the rules and this is how you have to live your life. And it's like, once you get to a place of like, no, I can choose to live my life in resonance and not buy into this cult or whatever it is, then I can literally create a reality. Again, now I'm going to Neville Goddard of the wish fulfilled my heaven on earth that, that, that does not involve allopathic medicine and tests and procedures and all this nonsense that people literally create. I mean, I would argue 95% of people who get a 
colon, uh, uh, you know, a colonoscopy and they, they get the polyp or two polyps, they create the cancer because now they're thinking in fear of what's in their colon mm-hmm. that would have been there if they never looked at it anyway, if they were living their life outside of the fear zone or the fear frequency. So it's like, all of this stuff is just self-reinforced. I know I just went off on a tangent with you, but you're like the person for me to have that conversation with, you know, because you understand this. It's it, it, we, we really do create these realities. Oh, yeah. And if they realize that well over 50% of all any of those tests and are false, what that <laughs> means, what that means is literally you could take a quarter and flip it in the literally, air, literally. and that is as accurate as your screening test. It's unbelievable, man. Literally. And, and 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 I think if people could just click with that, nobody, you don't have to do anything. Right. You don't have to go and attend them. Yeah. And it's not about, it, you're not being ignorant or irresponsible to not um, screen. The That's screening right. test, it, uh, I idea is a marketing idea. That's right. It is not about prevention. Right. If you look at the screening test science, which I have at length, it states that these tests are arbitrary at best and damaging at and worst. debilitating and murderous at worst. Yes. And I, and I would say they're murderous. I mean, again, I could give you stories. I mean, you, you I already know. know. You have a oh, thousand yeah. so, uh, so many stories. I mean, uh, you want to go stories. I could write <laughs> novels, novels of the stories that I listen to of people that have gone remember. into these situations that regret them all. And they are butchered for nothing. Right. Totally. You know, uh, and they're really just tricked and conned. And feared, you know, using fear as the currency to um, be uh, fuel for a system that is uh, just uh, vulturing off of them, basically. Yeah, 100%. Beautiful. Uh, Last question before I let you go. I already asked you for the future. You already answered that one. But just, you know, someone is just completely in resonance, which is what you are. How do you tell a person, you know, and again, most of the people on my show, they've, they've ejected at this point if they're not, you know, over the line of integrity consciously, but, you know, how do you tell them to opt out? Because that's what we're saying, you know, in a way that they aren't going to receive blowback and, you know, push back and disown, you know, being disowned by family, friends, and relatives. Like, what is your strategy? Because I know you get this question a lot. I'm sure you have a really brilliant, beautiful answer to it. But like, what do you tell somebody who isn't willing to opt out? Well, you mean of society as a whole or of the medical system? No, the system, the medical system, the sick care, the allopathic Mm -hmm. system. Well, um, they... (laughs) it's really individual the yeah. you know there's case by case sure. uh, generally i steer them towards trauma release first right. me too uh if they if they need to heal the traumas and because that's just ruling their subconscious drives right. and their right. conscious decisions and if they don't they're going to constantly bring themselves back into a state of victimhood and so that's why they keep going into the medical system because so they, the, that's feeding there. It's completing a loop inside of them right. that actually feels kind of good, believe it, it or not. It, yeah. Uh, the pain and the suffering, it actually makes them feel like that's normal. That's normal um, to them. So they have to change and clear that. And actually on my blog on yummy.doctor, I have a uh, trauma release exercise um, procedure and there's a video and that would be free and simple for someone to do to begin to use the psoas muscles of the legs and just release it off the body. And then and then come to the question again, do I need this or that? And yeah. see if it's changed, you know, for them. But generally I try to simplify it mostly. Simplify their body, what's happening for their body, 
why, why they wouldn't need to go because if they just made the lifestyle changes uh, on their own merit, they would be able to heal and, and, and actually be really responsible for their mm-hmm. bodies. Uh, you don't need the screening and you don't need the testing and you don't, because you're being on top of the system, your own system. Right. And right. that's true prevention. That's true cure. Right. Um, and, but really uh, it comes down to most people will have these conversations with me for the most part, because they're done with that system. Right. Like they've, they've been abused so much. They will never go again, or they're only going in a very, very slim capacity to get what they want for their uses. Like yeah. if they did want a blood test or they did want right. a follow-up scan or something, but most people will tell me their stories and go, I don't want them anymore. I want another way. And what, that's what, when they're ready. You know? what, do you, what do you think the percent, I, 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 by the way, I really appreciate that I'm in an hour and five minutes with you because this is such a profound conversation. But like, what do you think the percentage of humanity right now is actually at the level where they would come to see you? Are we even at 15% yet? It's really t- it's a tough tough to guess uh that would that would be i would like it to be at least 15 i don't know if it is to be honest um but i know giving the benefit of the doubt but oh if we're manifesting let's go high you know let's go 50 i guess i mean but let's we know these systems are failing they are failing they are They're they're done they're done they're done and so it's just a matter of time where that that percentage will continue to grow because you know again if you just look at what happens when people come to have that conversation with me and when my store was open to the public which it's yeah. now a private membership association Thank God. so you have to when you go to my websites for any of the like I have dmso.store cuz I just separate out my dmso stuff and then I have yumnaturals.store and both Genius. you have to sign up as a private member because we're moving everything away from that public domain. Yeah, including, you, yes, yeah. you have to. You must. This is this same is the for sure thing. <laughs> okay. No, same as me. I, by the way, everything is private. You know, yeah. you want to speak with me. There's three levels. You know, so everybody yeah. economically gets an opportunity. But you, it's the way it is. You're right. There's no option. There's no option. That's that's it. And so, but I miss it in a way because I did like when people would just come in, drive to the store you know, we'd have this conversation and they, there were the ones that were pinned and cut and all this stuff. And they were doing, they had a hard journey back, but they were determined and there was some sort of deep willpower for these people that's going to continue to expand and grow. And now think about that family and what they experienced, right. And they tell two friends and they tell two friends and this sort of thing at what point will we get that hundredth monkey effect yeah. and we yeah. will, um, it will just be like a we overnight thing because I've had this happen in the micro sure. where you wake up the next day and you're like, that wasn't reality. Yeah. Till today. Right. That's, that wasn't even a thing until now. Like, and one example, just as a, a weird example, which, you know, it's, it's between my partner and I, but, you know, he, he is a musician, but he's a musicologist, which, which means he's studied huge facets of music. I mean, nice. he knows music. Like, I'm still surprising him with some new bands and some certain bands. <laughs> but he knows, especially even like the music in the UK and whatever, and especially sure. the 80s genre, right? Because he's nice. a baby boomer like us. Yeah. And uh, so he finds this. 80s band out of the UK that is like this just the best. He's so excited to find it. Never heard of them before, not even a peep, not even a blip, right? And they were big. So I'm like, what? How is this possible? I, I swear they just in I think you manifest that, honey. You put that into some <laughs> part of your timeline in the past. The Mandela. He created the man. You tell it yourself, man, because it was. It's just, we couldn't come figure out, and he even lived in the UK for like seven years. And yeah. How could you have? No, this is just doesn't yeah. make any sense. But there, that's just one example of I'm finding many of these surprises. So, so sure. I say 
for everyone watching, practice opening yourself up to being pleasantly surprised and delighted by this life. It doesn't always have to be a uh, of, um, you know, where you're on edge waiting for the next shoe to drop, right? <laughs> That's living in your trauma self. But you can wake up each day and wonder what presents are waiting for you in your presence and that you can be delighted. You can look at life in that through that lens instead of the dystopian lens, which they keep feeding us in our minds and in the, you know, right. in the movies because we are creating it and if yep. we keep seeing it we will keep we will make it so and we have to be very cautious of that beautifully stated i want to ask you a bonus question but i'll end the podcast and i'll ask it off the air because i don't want to any, put any risk That's okay you can ask it i'm i'm oh, okay. I just, it, it, it's more for you and me though because oh. you know where it's going and i don't want to like this is so profound i don't want to risk anything with the sensors and the nonsense oh. so <laughs> i would just say thank you um, obviously all of your stuff is up and it's been up for a couple of minutes, but is there final words or is there, if somebody wanted to reach out to you or connect with you or, you know, talk to you about anything specifically, you know, other than what you have up there now, is there any other ways that you would want them to understand? Uh, well, um, you know, just at this point, I'm trying to clear my schedule more so that sure. I can work on formulating more of the courses and classes I have. It's a quite an ambitious project. Uh, and what I would say is before you want to immediate, the first thing is, oh, she knows I'm going to ask her. So the <laughs> first, it's true though. The first thought is I have a situation. Okay. I have a situation and I know she's got some resources. I'll go into a Telegram group and I'll search in there because there's tons of resources. And I'll see if I can find anything about my condition. And if I can't or I'm not sure, then I'll ask the group because I have a very nice big group in Healthy Dose of Truth that will assist you and direct you, right? And that's the community we're forming. We're forming helpers to help sure. each other rather than lean on one person all the time, which is not realistic. Right. And ultimately the point where you're leaning on yourself, you know, you can, you know how to research, you know, how to use your resources. Like I teach my daughter, I literally right. teach my job. My I don't answer her every question. Of course. I would say, well, well, how would you, if I wasn't here or if, you know, you were by yourself or something, how would you answer that for yourself? What would you do next? Who would you go and ask? Or how would you do it? You know, and That's get her too. thinking, right. Oh, this book, or I go to the librarian or I go to this resource or I'd go call grandpa whatever and uh and it's the same thing well maybe not grandpa <laughs> he likes his shots you know so that's not gonna work out but anyway uh, um I, but you know what I'm saying so like this this um being resourceful of yourself trusting in yourself enough that you have the wherewithal to get the answers that you need and then watch some of the videos like search at yummy.doctor for, you know, if it's arthritis or whatever right. it is and see if I've covered the topic. And then I fill those videos for people so that yeah. they can uh, run with it. They know they got to do magnesium. They know, Oh, I've just learned about DMSO. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start, I'm going to start detoxing through enemas and I'm going to drink some pure water and I'm going to stop eating crap. That's step one. You know, I'm going to stop poisoning myself right. in all these levels. And right. that's going to take your focus for a while too. So that's, unless it's acute, you know, that's usually the, the place to, the way to go about it. Beautiful. Um, you're amazing. This was amazing. Uh, so all of you amazing people out there who will be watching this when you do watch this always support the amazing folks that come on the Jay Campbell podcast. Amanda's stuff is right there. It's yummy dot doctor. Uh, she's on IG. She's everywhere. Facebook, uh, yum naturals, her telegram group. I'm actually in your telegram group. Um, so again, please do that. And remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We'll see all of you guys very soon.